why we get a systolic murmur in the aortic stenosis? Why do we get a diastolic murmur in the mitral stenosis? Why do we get a systolic murmur in the pulmonic stenosis? Normally, when we read about these valvular heart diseases, our common tendency is to remember them that this type of murmur is seen in that kind of valvular heart disease. So the basic objective of this instruction lecture number 93 is to reverse engineer that process of learning so that we on our own can figure it out that what kind of murmur to expect in this valvular heart disease. So valvular heart disease, mostly you'll be getting two variant. One is stenosis, another is regurgitation. And let us take an example how we can do it on our own. For example, take aortic stenosis. So the first question that you need to ask yourself uh, that what is aortic stenosis? Well, what is stenosis? Stenosis means that there's a narrowing of the valve, which is causing obstruction in the forward flow of the blood via that valve. So the question is now that when the forward flow of the blood occurs to the aortic valve, answer is during the time of systole, systole because that time only during the systolic period, the blood flows from left ventricle to the aorta via the aortic valve. So aortic valve, as that is narrowed, and as the blood flows through that narrowed aortic valve, that causes a turbulence in the blood flow, causing this abnormal heart sound. So now again, try to connect the dots. Then what kind of murmur do you expect in the aortic stenosis? Systolic murmur or diastolic murmur? Answer would be systolic murmur. Why? I would again reinforce the idea. That means during the systolic murmur is created during the systolic period. That means between S1 and S2. What happens after S1? After S1, mitral valve and the right side, the tricuspid valves are closed, but aortic valve and pulmonic valves are open. So on the left side of the heart, in a patient with aortic stenosis, during the systolic period, as the blood is trying to move through a narrowed aortic opening, valvular opening, from the left ventricle to the system circling to the aorta. And that time, as the blood is flowing through that narrowed aortic valvular opening in the aortic stenosis, there is a turbulence in the blood flow and that is creating a sound that's a murmur. And this is occurring during the systolic period as the valve blood is flowing from the left ventricle to the system circulation by the aortic valve. So this kind of murmur, what do you expect in the aortic stenosis is systolic murmur. And we don't need to remember them, we just applied some basic logics there. So what kind of murmur do you expect in the pulmonic stenosis? You do, again don't need to remember. The same story would be applied on the right side of the heart. Because again, the pulmonic stenosis means that the murmur of the pulmonic stenosis means that that murmur is created when the blood is flowing through a narrowed uh, pulmonic valve from the right ventricle to the pulmonary vasculature. So in that places and that time, that is only happening during the, again, the systole. Because in the, during the systole, the pulmonic valve is open, but the tricuspid valve is closed in the right side of the heart. So, Again, in the pulmonic stenosis, the kind of murmur that you expect is systolic murmur. Now, think about mitral stenosis. What kind of murmur do you expect? Now, we need to ask this question that the same thing, that murmur of stenosis would be produced when a blood is flowing through that valve, narrowed valvular opening and in the, their forward flow. So when there is a forward flow of the blood via the mitral valve during the systole period or the diastole period? I think answer will be definitely diastole period because in the diastole period, only the left ventricle is getting filled from the left atrium to the opened up mitral valve. So what kind of murmur do you expect in the mitral stenosis? Answer is diastolic murmur. Because only during the diastolic period, as the blood is flowing from the narrowed mitral opening, the forward flow is going on, and that is creating an abnormal sound. 
So obviously the murmur of the mitral stenosis would be typically diastolic murmur. What kind of murmur do you expect typically in tricuspid stenosis? The same story, the left side of the heart, you need to apply on the right side of the heart. Obviously it would be diastolic murmur. Now think about regurgitation. What is regurgitation? Regurgitation means it's a problem in improper closure of a valve. So valve is officially closed during the income in the case of regurgitation, but as they're not properly closed, so blood is flowing back in the reverse way, in the back way, backward flow is all going. So in aortic regurgitation, what is happening that the aortic valve is closed, but the blood is flowing back from the aorta back to the left ventricle. Now the question you need to ask that, when the aortic valves remain closed? Answer is after second heart sound, S2, they usually close actually. So between the S2 and S1, that is the diastolic period. So they remain closed during that period, the aortic valve. And then only the blood from the left atrium comes to the left ventricle. So during this time, if the blood regurgitates back from the aorta back to the left ventricle again, due to this in inappropriate or not fully proper closure of the aortic valve, the murmur would be created. So the question is this, that when do you expect the backflow of the blood via the closed aortic valve during the systole or the diastole? Answer is diastole, diastole period, because that is the time when officially aortic valve is closed. So what kind of murmur do you expect in the aortic reagitation? Systolic or diastolic? Answer is diastolic. Now the same story you can apply on the right side of the heart. Uh, what kind of murmur do you expect in pulmonic regurgitation? Obviously the same thing, but diastolic. But only the thing is the murmurs as their mitral murmur would be, you'll be hearing in the mitral place, like typically the mitral place, the uh, left-sided fifth intercostal space mid-clavicular line near the apex. Same thing, the aortic murmurs would be hearing based on the right second intercostal space at the right-sided upper sternal region line point actually same thing in the pulmonary uh, murmurs pulmonic vulvar associated murmur would be hearing on the left side so only the location of the murmur would change depending on which valves are applied but the basic principle what kind of murmurs do you are you seeing systolic murmur or diastolic murmur that is the same principle that means you just need to think that what kind of Murmur could be seen, systolic diastolic, but just by thinking that is it stenosis or regurgitation and apply the basic principles of the stenosis and regurgitation and you can figure it out. At the end, just to reinforce this knowledge, I'm again repeating what I said, like for with the example of aortic stenosis. So someone asks you what kind of murmur do you expect typically in aortic stenosis? So first you ask yourself that, what is stenosis? Answer is stenosis is nothing but the narrowed opening, which is causing some difficulty in the forward flow of the blood through a, through a valve. So aortic stenosis means that due to the out, narrowing of the aortic valve opening, there is some difficulty in the blood which moves from left ventricle to the uh, aorta, to the system circulation. So in the forward flow. So next question is this, that why the murmur in aortic stenosis is created? It is created due to the turbulence of the blood flow as the blood moves from the left ventricle through the narrowed aortic opening, valve opening to the systemic circulation. So the next question you need to ask that when the, there is a forward blood flow occurs via the aortic valve, answer is during systole. Because during the systole only, the left ventricle pumps, ejects blood into the systemic circulation. So what kind of murmur do you expect? in the aortic stenosis. You can connect two plus two equal to four. And so be ejection systolic murmur. So I'm planning to do more sessions on the murmur as requested. But this was just a basic introductory session so that you can learn the concepts on your own rather than trying to memorize them. Thank you very much for attending this session.